Is it possible to cut your retirement time in half while driving the car of your dreams, living in your dream home, and taking those bucket list vacations every year? From someone who's done it, the answer is absolutely yes. But you've got to start playing the game differently. You've got to throw out the old rule book and you've got to start thinking about how to play the game like an intelligent investor. If you don't know me, my name is Shannon Robnett, and I've spent the last three decades investing and optimizing my strategies to get the best cash flow and value from what I've invested in. And I've learned how to get the most out of it. It's now my goal to share this knowledge and guidance with other investors to help them double their buying power in half the time and do it faster and better without the bumps than I ever did. This video is going to do that by showing you a side-by-side -side comparison of Dr. One and Dr. Two. Dr. One uses the traditional investment methods and Dr. Two, well, he's thrown the old rule book out, ditched tradition, and is doing it the way of the intelligent investor. All right, let's jump into this and let's start with Dr. One. Dr. One makes a million dollars a year. Now, that's not bad take home. As the owner of his own business, that's gonna be great. Now let's talk about the deductions that Dr. One is gonna be able to take and have the tax benefits of. First thing he's gonna do is what every financial planner will tell you to do, and that's invest in the simple IRA. That's gonna allow him about $16,000 per person in deduction, and we're gonna assume that he's put his wife on the payroll, they're filing jointly, and we're gonna take that $32,000 off of and put it in a simple. So we've taken the 32,000 for the simple, that's gonna go in tax-free, and it's gonna come out being taxed later. And as always, everybody knows about buying a vehicle and putting it in your business, right? So we're gonna say that mama drives the Escalade, that's worth $100,000, but you really don't get to write off the full 100 you're only writing off $60,000 of that because you can only take 60% of the 179 depreciation for the vehicle, right? So we're gonna call that the 179D. So now we've taken another $60,000 off of that. Then Doc travels a fair bit. He goes to a conference or two. The wife and kids come with him. They stay, they go to Disneyland after that. And we're gonna say he's gonna take another $10,000 in travel deductions. Now. This is going to leave him with some discretionary money as we can obviously see. And Dr. One isn't totally without thought of the future, so he's gonna buy a million dollar apartment building. That million dollar apartment building is gonna take $300,000 as a down payment. What Dr. One is looking for is he's looking for that bonus depreciation. Bonus depreciation is something that came into effect under the Trump administration that allows investors to depreciate the asset in an accelerated rate. Typically on an asset of that size, you're going to be able to take about 50% of the overall cost as depreciation, and I can explain more of this later, but we can take that as depreciation and we can allocate 60% of that to this year's passive income. So we're going to invest $300,000 into that asset and we're gonna get that passive deduction. The problem is Dr. One has no passive income, so that's not going to work for him this year. He is going to spend the 300,000. He is going to get the depreciation. It's going to carry over on his taxes, but it's going to be in the following years, so the income off of that asset will be tax-free. Not a bad play, but so far, these are really kind of all the deductions that he has. So we've got 32,000 for the simple, $60,000 for the 179 depreciation on the car, and then $10,000 in travel. So Doc has got $898,000 in taxable income, and he's going to pay 37% on that. So quick math is that Doc is gonna stroke a check for $332,000 to the IRS. Youch. Listen. If you wanna know all the tax codes and the intricacies behind them that I've listed in this video, you can find them in the first link below. And while you're there, it's gonna cost you a thumbs up. But bring those to your accountant and have them see where you can utilize these tax codes to save you time on getting to retirement and money today. But let me take a minute right now and defend CPAs. I love CPAs. They are excellent at their job. 
Most people are using them in the wrong way. They go see their accountants in February. The year's over with. They've already done everything they can do because the tax year is closed. What happens is people are asking the wrong person to do the job. A tax strategist is really who you want to be working with if you've got the kind of problems that are causing you to have to write checks to the IRS with commas in them. So if you will get involved with a tax strategist, if you don't, contact me. I've got a great list of people that do just that, but we can help you lower that. And stop expecting your CPA to dig you out of a hole that you never got any advice on to fix in the first place. But let's look at what doc number two decides to do. So doctor number two, he's making a same cool million dollars. Okay, all that med school finally paid off. First thing doctor number two is going to do is he's going to trademark his likeness. He uses it in flyers. He uses it in meet and greets. He goes to conferences. He is the face of his business and he's going to trademark that and he's going to take a 15% royalty on all business revenues. That means that he's gonna take $150,000 of this as a royalty. Royalty. Now, the royalty is passive income, and I'll show you at the bottom of this example why we want that, because doctor number one, if you remember, wasn't able to do anything with passive income. So $150,000 comes out of there as a royalty. The next thing that doctor number two is gonna do, he's gonna go buy mama that same Escalade. So he's gonna take, he's gonna take his $60,000 there for that Escalade, but doc, wants to drive a Lamborghini. Now, we all know that IRS says that in order to deduct a vehicle for the purpose of a vehicle in a business, it has to weigh over 6,000 pounds, except as it's a tool in the business. So how do you do something different? Well, you probably heard of that funny little app called Turo. Turo is an app that allows you to rent your personal cars and thereby making them a tool to fulfill the business obligation. In doing that, Doc's gonna roll down to the Lamborghini dealership and drop $250,000 on a Lambo. The good news is Doc's got great credit. He's gonna finance that thing with about $60,000 down and he's going to get about $150,000 in section 179 depreciation on the Lambo. So now he's got a Lamborghini that he's gonna place on the app that's gonna have about a $2,500 payment. The last time I rented a Ferrari on the app, I've also rented a Lamborghini on the app, those cost about 1,500 bucks a day. So Doc's gotta get three days a month of rental on this Lamborghini to pay for it. But he gets the $150,000 tax deduction right now. The next thing Doc's gonna do, he's now created two businesses. He's got his Turo business and he's got his royalty business, his likeness. Doc is now going to be able to take those bucket list vacations, 75 whopping thousand bucks a year on travel, and he's going to be able to write those off. You know how? Every time he goes on vacation, he's gonna have a board meeting. He's gonna take notes, he's gonna file those away, and then he's going to say, this was a corporate retreat, this is how this went. Boom, there goes another $75,000 of before tax dollars that are gonna go to those investments. The next thing Doc's gonna do, he's gonna take advantage of something known as the Augusta Rule. The Augusta Rule was created from the Augusta, Georgia, the masters. And during that time, what would happen is people would rent out their houses and they'd make a ton of money because people wanna live or stay on the golf course during the masters. They are allowed to take a deduction on the rental of their home for 14 days a year. Now, you find the comps, you do your due diligence, you do everything that's necessary, but we're gonna say that Doc takes and he gets a thousand bucks a day for his house, and guess who he rents it to? Company number one, company number two. So when he's sitting there creating the ad for his Turo app, he rented out the house. When he's recording videos and taking pictures of his likeness for his business advertising, He's gonna do it at the house. And we're gonna say that the doc's gonna just take a thousand bucks a day. He's not greedy, right? So we're gonna take another $14,000 off for the Augusta rule, right? But we're not done. Doc is also looking at the future and he's going to buy that apartment complex. When he buys that apartment complex, he's going to get the same treatment as doctor number one. He's going to get a 
deduction on his future taxes against depreciation for $360,000. However, unlike doctor number one, he is going to be able to use that on his royalty money. So he's actually going to be able to deduct this whole $150,000 off of his income this year because we created a passive business. That passive business can use depreciation. The 179 comes right off the taxes. We don't have to worry about that. Taxes or travel, that comes right off the top as well. The Augusta rule right off the top. So Doc is going to get a $150,000 tax benefit for the apartment that he bought. So he's going to take these deductions Whereas doctor number one, he also bought this, but you notice we didn't put anything in here because he doesn't have any passive income yet in year one. So they're both going to roll over the passive losses that they cannot use. In this case, doctor number two is gonna roll over $110,000. Doctor number one is gonna roll over the full 360. But at the end of the day, doctor number two has $610,000 in taxable income which means at the end of the day, he is only going to pay $200,000 to the IRS. Now, you can see here, we went from $332,000 owed to $200,000 owed with just five strategies. What could you do with the rest of the strategies that I have in my little bag of secrets? So when I made this video, I came up with five ways to use the tax laws as an intelligent investor. But this video would have been way too long if I did all the strategies that I've employed for myself and others. But if you want the rest, all you need to do is click on the second link below to get the rest of the strategies that we use on a regular basis to make our people intelligent investors.